What's up everybody, back with some Eternal Evolution. And in this one, it's all about what I found to be the in-game offers I think are great value. Let's face it, it's a mobile game. Uh, microtransactions are here and they won't be going away anytime soon, if ever. So I just wanted to point out a few that are about as cost efficient as you're gonna get. And they've been helpful with my progression so far. If you found any that I missed, um, be sure to mention them in the comments because it's all about players helping players. Let's get it. <laughs> Starting this off, we're going to dive into the passes of Eternal Evolution. Okay, so for when I can tell, you have four reoccurring options. Number one, you have the monthly pass, which I'm going to open right here. You have a basic and an advanced option. Then number two, you have the Wasteland Pass, which is just a little bit further down. Right here, you have the Wasteland Pass. Then you have the Battle Pass, which is on the main screen right here. It's called the Battle Order, but I just call it a pass. And then if we go back to the Passes option in the store, we also have the Border Pass. So that's going to be four different passes. How I rank them in terms of cost efficiency are, number one, it's going to be the Monthly Pass. Now keep in mind, I am referring to early game or new players' perspectives because that's what I am right now. Um, but I recommend both of these. My reasoning is I feel these will be a solid pickup no matter what state of the game you're in, but obviously the earlier, the more valuable it's gonna be for you. Currently, I have no issues with diamonds, but I can't imagine this lasts forever. As you can see at the top right there, I'm at like 137,000. I do spend quite a number of diamonds refreshing a lot of different stuff in this game, and I'm still able to keep that up. But keep in mind, that's also because if we go to the main screen and we go into missions, I'm getting a lot of these diamonds from these stage rewards right here from just pushing campaign. So I can feel when this starts to really, really slow down and I get stuck for quite some time, I can see my diamonds drying up rather quickly. So if we go back to the monthly pass, so from the basic, which is going to be $5, I'm really only looking at those daily gems. Moving over to the advanced, this is going to be for $10. I would do both of them. Um, that's because you get 10 limited tickets overall, plus two basic summons and two advanced summons daily. How I value limited tickets in this game is a one to one ratio. So $1 for one limited ticket. If you can find a better value, it's even better depending on the percentage value of the in-game offer available. So 10 limited tickets already pays for the value of this pass. Then on top of that, you get some good resources daily. I find basic summons very, very hard to come by in this game, even as a new player, just entering week six as of today, where I really, really only get these from the monthly pass. Um, I do believe you also get them in the stage rewards, but they're not for every single one. You can see there are different ones like right here after this one. So I wish that would be stage uh, 66. I'm going to get 10. And then previously I got a bunch as well, but it's not a consistent amount because you are going to get stuck in the chapter and you're not going to be able to progress. For a little bit of time this kind of sucks because this is where i would think you would be doing the most of your summoning based off my experience from other gotchas but in this game it isn't after week one or week one you're trying to use a lot of your diamonds on those basic summons which are right here in case you weren't familiar with it if we go to the base um and then we open up the recruitment center and we go to basic these are going to be the ones right here so it's gonna be 2700 for 10 summons in week one, when you're first starting out on a new server, you are going to be wanting to use them on this so that you can kind of build your core five roster. After week one, you're going to want to start saving your diamonds. And I'm glad that I was told this because like I said, you use diamonds a lot in this game. If you're worried about fodder, which is going to be hero food, which is if we go into the evolve right here and um, fodder is used to build up your other heroes. So like say I wanted to build up my Sorietta, I would have to use um, this hero right here, which is considered epic fodder. And then that's going to build her up. Now, if you're worried like, hey, if I'm not doing a lot of basic summons after week one, how am I going to be able to get fodder? Well, if you go into, uh, well, if you go into Lost Valley, if you go into Diza Caves, um, this is where I read you're going to want to spend most of your stamina supplements. And the reason is because at level 10, if we go over to level 10, you're going to be getting legendary gear. This is a massive power boost to your account. So you're going to want to be buying these stamina supplements as much as you can every single day so that you can um, build up your stamina supplements. So when you reach level 10, you can just do a mass amount of farming. I think I was at about 300 plus when I hit level 10. And that gives you these tickets right here. So you're going to be able to getting selectable faction recruitment card shards. And that's where you're going to get a lot of your fodder. If we go into my inventory quickly, just to show you uh, shards right here, I got 4,650. It takes 60 to uh, do one. You can select the faction you want to use them on. So like I said, even though I'm not doing basic summons or advanced summons, that is where I'm getting the majority of the food for the time being. Number two is going to be the wasteland pass. So if we open up the wasteland pass, 
uh, right here. Going back to my one to one ratio of limited tickets as a value, you should be looking at this one because these are the tickets that are going to give you the chance at the best heroes in the game. Those juicy triple S heroes on their related banner or if we open up this so you can have a visual representation. So these heroes right here, these triple S heroes that are going to be on these limited banners or you can open up the exchange shop and you're going to be able to use those data chips that you get from doing limited summons, which also has a one to one ratio of just buying the hero flat out or you can buy a gene hybrid which acts as a duplicate of any hero in the game. However, I do feel this pass will depreciate in value as you progress further into the game and mostly think this is a placeholder for new players um, to give them that extra bump of limited tickets leading into the week three double chip event when you're starting out on a new server or simply early game players. Um, for $25, you're getting 42 limited tickets, three Soretta copies, some diamonds, a lead hero selection card, which is mess since you can see here, let me open it up. You only get one of these three heroes and honestly i don't use them i have started to build up this assassin hero right here i think his name is randall just because i really don't have any assassin heroes on this account i find this hero right here rakana does a lot of damage but just dies so fast jumps in boom dead nothing you can do about it so these are more so the filler heroes and then you get talent potions or soul potions this game calls it i'm just going to call it talent potions because that's how it correlates it's just easier for me to remember um, but yeah, you get these and these are super valuable and they ramp up in cost uh, very fast depending on your hero's ascension quality when trying to unlock additional talents of your hero or improve stats. The limited tickets, once again, like the advanced monthly, they pay for the value already. Um, you're getting nearly double the ratio of what I try to aim for of one to one. The reason I said I feel this is going to depreciate in value is because once you have your Soretta Immortal, which I do right now, the further copies are just like they're okay. They are what they are. The elite hero selection card based off the heroes you're going to outgrow these heroes very quickly if you're spending so it's really just there for the limited tickets because there's better value passes for the talent potions um i have only bought this twice so far and honestly i feel like i don't need it anymore i feel like i would rather just move that money over to pop-up offers with whatever i'm lacking at the moment such as limited tickets so from my perspective early game i'd rank this at number two but then i'm probably going to drop it down to fourth uh with game progression so number three we're going to back out here and we are going to go into the battle pass or the battle order so my reasoning is this pass is a tough one because the resources you get in terms of soul rubelite and xp used for your hero leveling is always a plus when starting out if we go into my heroes right now if i open up my sorietta i'm trying to get her up to 199 it's almost 500,000 per level right now. So if I do this right here, boom, I gotta wait another 500,000 of XP. That is a lot of XP. If we go over to my Northeon, if I wanna advance him to level 200, it's gonna be 100,000 soul rubelite. So you can see these ramp up very quickly. But the faster you can boost your heroes, the faster you make progression, and the faster you can get rewards and unlock different content. Uh, coming in at $15 for this pass, I think this is a solid price for those leveling resources alone. You also get 11,000 diamonds and three elite hero selector cards. However, they are much, much better than the one from the Wasteland Pass. If I click on it, let me go into rewards and I click on this right here. Not only does this one allow you to choose any epic in the game, you're also going to be able to get three of them total from when you complete the pass. One at the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end. These are very helpful as you will be saving those advanced summons. Like I said, you're not going to be doing much basic summons after week one. Um, you're going to be saving for the double chip, etc. So getting a variety of epics is going to be a very slow go. So with this pass, you're going to be able to target specific strong epics like Serena right here, which is the healer. Um, and then if we back out here, you can get us. Uh, oh my God, where is it? We can get Sorietta. Uh, where is she? There she's right there. And then or you can get like Taylor. Where's Taylor in this? Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. There, or you can get Taylor right there. Senway is also good. So there's a lot of heroes you can choose from compared to the Wasteland Elite Hero Selection card. Now this pass may depreciate as well in value as you progress further into the game, but it's definitely not going to be as quickly as I feel the Wasteland Pass does. So from my perspective, uh, where I'm at in the game right now, I feel number three. I'm very comfortable with leaving it here, and I think maybe it could bump up to number two when that Wasteland Pass drops due to the uh, depreciation value. Moving over to number four, which is going to be the border pass. So if we open it up right here, uh, oh, it's already on it. So unlike the previous two, this will never depreciate in value because of one simple thing, stamina supplements, these things right here. You will be farming your butt off using these in the Lost Valley. Uh, one of the game modes for farming gear, let me just open it up. I did show it uh, earlier, but let me just do it again so you can get a visual. So Lost Valley, 
um, these three bosses right here. This is one of the game modes for farming gear, commanders, or prototypes, but mostly at the beginning, you're going to want to be farming Diza for the gear, and you're going to want to unlock legendary gear um, as quickly as possible, like I mentioned earlier. So if we go back here, coming in at just $10, uh, hold on one second, passes... Okay, so coming in at $10, I really can't find a better cost-efficient offer besides the special basic, which I'll get into later. Um, this border pass gives 100 stamina supplements for $10. If we look at the special basic, um, where is it? Special pack. If we look at the special basic pack, um, you're going to be able to get 5 stamina supplements for $1. But if we go back to the border pass, this gives you 100 for $10. If we were just doing the daily special package, that would be $20 for 100 instead of $10. So it's still a very solid pickup for reasons I'll get into later. But yeah, just let's stick with the border pass for now. Um, you also get a lot of uh, talent potions, prototype chests, which are these right here, um, with the ability to choose a specific one. Um, this is very helpful as I mostly farm Diza for gear. I'm not focused on commanders. I'm not focused on prototypes. So yeah, this is very helpful for me because I get to choose the one I want. So from my perspective, I feel this is going to jump up to number two behind the monthlies as you will outgrow the Wasteland and Battle Pass eventually. So I will buy this every single time it's off cooldown. Um, to wrap up this portion of the video, I really like at least how I'm playing the game right now. I have the option to skip some of these based off where I'm at in the game. Uh, many other games I play monthly pass or passes in general are mandatory for what I personally consider to have a fun gaming experience. Now we're gonna go into some honorable mentions, which is going to be the one-time purchase growth fund, which is right here. Um, I'm gonna put up a screenshot because I already did buy this. It's the best dollar value for diamonds and it costs $15. Complete the necessary chapters and you get a lot of diamonds. Anytime I see a game with a growth fund, pack, offer, whatever it may be called, it's most likely worth the cost and this right here is no different. Moving over to the Quantum Mimic Machine, uh, my event did just end so I will have to be showing you some screenshots here. So you get three free drops a day, of course you can buy more, but here are some of the rewards you can get. Now yes, the prototype and triple S hero copy probability is extremely low, but I have gone through this event two times now, and the first time I got the Triple S Hero uh, score, I think that's his name. Let me just, before I uh, mess anything up, let me just open it up right here. Uh, oh, what am I doing? Okay, score, 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 score. Where is, oh no, he would be up here. Still, oh, here he is. Yeah, so score. So not score, like the chocolate, but score. I So yeah, I got score, and then with the recent Quantum Mimic Machine, I ended up getting a Sorvelli copy. I don't consider myself lucky, so maybe this game just loves me, or it just took all my mobile games I've played and um, finally gave me some return value luck. Um, where the value comes into play is if you go to the event shop, you can buy this $5 energy event pack for this item right here, the glowing particle. What this does is allow you to collect all your rewards obtained from the event twice. If you get lucky with drops, totally worth the price. Just remember to wait till the event is almost over so that you won't have to buy the pack again as you collect more rewards. As you can see, I bought the pack and got another Triple S Cervelli copy, among everything else that I have obtained. The next thing is going to be the Everyday Fatty Treasure. Sometimes there can be some value here, especially for diamonds, so make sure to check this on the main screen every day when the server resets. Um, next is going to be the Soul Mine Factions. So if we open up the Soul Mines right here, what I'm talking about is these three factions on the side. So for every 10th faction floor completed, so like Terran, Atlas, Wenfear, you're going to get a pop-up offer giving you advanced summons. Now personally for me, this isn't something that I would consider buying, um, but since I'm just starting out and really trying to save up a lot of summons for the recruitment event whenever I choose to go all in on it, I have been tempted to buy a few, but I have resisted. I have no idea how, but I keep picturing like Nicolas Cage yelling at me and that seems to help. If you're a spender and you're trying to get some of these advanced summons, this is a potential option. Moving over to the weekend pack. Let me open it up right here. Weekend pack. Here we go. This is one of my favorite things in the game and I've been buying this every single time. The first box is a gamble, but for $5, you can get between three and 10 limited tickets as well as some resource chests, five stamina supplements and 10 advanced tickets. No matter what RNG gives you out of those limited tickets uh, chest, this is a good value and I definitely recommend this one. Then the daily special pack, which I did briefly show earlier. This is another solid contender for me. I don't buy the $5 advance pack. I instead buy the basic. Um, it's still the same price as the advanced, but there's different items. 
Um, I think this one is a better steal, especially if just starting out for the advanced summons, talent potions, stamina supplement. Uh, you get these mimic soul shards so you can save up to 60, choose any epic in the game. However, what I will say is the $1 option, which I showed uh, earlier, I always buy this. Um, if when I go to my calendar, which is right here, my 30 day login calendar, um, if there's a day that gives good rewards because this top up doubles the login reward. So in this calendar, I would use it for, say, the advanced ticket days. So instead of three, I'm going to get six. Um, I'm going to use it for these mimic soul shards. So instead of 30, I'm going to get 60. Boom, that's one full hero. Um, I would use it for these right here, these mythic runes. These are very hard to come by. So this is going to double it to 20. I think this would be my go-to option based off what this 30-day login calendar for me gives me. So yeah, the mythic runes would be my best value. But whatever you consider to be valuable, I would head over to that special pack and snag that $1 purchase if you're not buying anything else for the rest of the day. And finally, if you're able to line up your spending with the military expansion event seen here, it just adds some bonus to your purchases because when you buy them, you get battle merit. Obviously, some of these requirements are crazy high. But regardless, it's there. If you're going to spend anyways, at least look for this, especially if you're doing high priced packs. If I missed anything, be sure to comment down below because this is just based off what I felt works for me progression wise, value wise as a new player that just started his just started his day one of week six. Having said all this, this game definitely can be playable as free to play while maintaining an enjoyable experience. Um, these are just some of the options I want to suggest if you want to support the game and speed up your progression cost effectively. Um, I got some banger videos coming up. I got my 10 beginner tips. I got my six week analysis where I go over the mistakes I made as well as comparing progress with a fellow friend who's fully free to play while uh, while I consider myself a low to medium spender and then my first 1100 all in recruitment event summon session that's going to be a really good one as always thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one